Early afternoon in the city of Katsina, best known in the past for being the epicenter of the centuries-old Katsina Emirate. Not unexpectedly, the most imposing monument in Katsina is the palace of the Emir, the traditional ruler of Katsina Emirates. A playground beside the Emir's palace rings out with the excited cries of children enjoying the holiday season, setting the tone for an all-consuming festive mood. This is the time each year when the inhabitants of the city gear up for the Eid al-Kabir, the most spectacular Muslim festival of the year. Horses grazing in the background provide an early insight into some of the activities that are to come at the same time as they represent a window into Katsina's rich and colorful past. In this setting, it is easy to imagine that the children and adolescents who crowd into the square this afternoon will be the main protagonists of future Durba displays. As the last week of January 2005 draws to a close, a festive mood permeates the city's normal activities. Older youths engage themselves in showing off exciting dance steps as the throbbing rhythms of the drums hold dozens of fascinated spectators captive. Contrast, within the privacy of the palace walls, more serious activities connected with the impending festival are going on as the present Emir, Al-Haji Muhammad Kabir Usman, confers with some of the Emirates' traditional title holders. The Emir's departure from the outer courtyard is heralded by the shrill tones of Scottish bagpipes, a colourful inheritance derived from the military pageantry of past British colonial rulers. As he nears his own residence several yards further on, however, the traditional musicians, whose task it has been to serenade the rulers of Katsina for several centuries now, take over the task of providing music.
To get an insight into the history of Katsina, we turned to the current Waziri, or traditional Prime Minister of Katsina, Dr. Sani Abubakar Luga. The early settlers of Katsina were believed to have settled at a place presently called Dulbi Takushei, some few kilometers from present Katsina city. There is no certainty as to when they lived there, but it is generally believed that they resided in that place for almost a thousand years before the advent of the great Bayajidda of the House Land fame. The first recognized king of Katsina was the grandson of Bayajidda called Kumayao who lived at Durbi Takushii, and their tombs can still be seen at Durbi Takushii. Historians accept that Kumayao ruled about the year 990 to 993 AD, and he ruled for over 50 years. His descendants continued ruling Kasina, up to the time they moved to the present location, which is a more luxuriant land for agricultural purposes. Kasina became most prominent and the history of Kasina started being recorded about the year 1110 AD when Islam was introduced to Kasina. Following the introduction of Islam, the ruler of Kasina inevitably came to play a leading role in the field of religious worship, as remains evident from this colorful procession from the palace to the mosque for solemn prayers on the occasion of the Eid al-Kabir celebration, a major event in the festive season. The tradition before the advent of Islam in Kasina was that the strongest person during an annual wrestling contest would slaughter the reigning king and take over the throne. Muhammad Koro slaughtered the then pagan king in the year 1340 AD and took over the throne. <laughs> Muhammad Koro, being the first Muslim king, abolished the traditional uh, resting contest and introduced the appointment of kings based on Islamic rules and regulations. That was the beginning of the Koro dynasty. The earlier dynasty was called the Kumayao or Durbawa dynasty. Muhammadu Koro's descendants continued ruling Kasina up to the Jihad of 1804, led by Sheikh Usman bin Fodio. Madam Umarun Dalaj's family, the jihadists, continued ruling Kasina as emirs, not as kings, until the advent of colonialism. In Kasina, we had the Durbawa dynasty which terminated with Muhammad Koro, the first Muslim king. Then the Koro dynasty was terminated by the jihadists and Omar and Dallaji became the emir. They were called Dallazawa, coined from his name Dallaji. Then the Sulubawa set the ruling house from 1906. When night falls on Idir Kabir day, various forms of cultural displays provide entertainment in different parts of Katsina. Dancers, 
acrobats and singers provide a foretaste of the sparkling performances with which they intend to thrill the Emir and his entourage during the following day's Durba. Different strokes for different folks. For those who cannot be bothered to join the crowds, the homely comfort of fireside chats provide an alternative means of whiling away the night. As dawn breaks, the real stars of the forthcoming Durba display enjoy some moments of peaceful relaxation. Horses have been a key instrument of power in West African kingdoms and empires of the past, from Wagadu to Mali, from Songhai to Kebi, from Borno to Kano, from Oyo to Nupe, from Katsina to Zazao. The long-awaited day is here. <laughs> A dazzling array of court officials, warriors, court musicians and traditional bodyguards form up to provide an impressive escort for the Emir. <laughs> When the British arrived in Kassina in 1903, they met the Emir of Kassina, Abu Bakr, on the throne. They later removed him and appointed his uncle, Malamiru, as the Emir in 1905. Malamiro ruled for just about 11 months and he was removed and replaced by the Durb in Kasina, Muhammad Diko, as the new Emir of Kasina in 1906. <laughs> After the death of Muhammad Diko in 1944, his son, late al Hadza Osman Nogogo, was appointed as the Emir of Kassina. When he died in 1981, the present Emir was appointed al Haji Dr. Muhammad Kabir Usman as the Emir of Kassina. Before he sets out for the Durba, the current Emir of Katsina, Al Haji Muhammadu Kabir Usman, pauses to express his heartfelt wishes for prosperity and peace for all the citizens of the Emirate and of Nigeria as a whole.
bisa government lafiya na kasar nan da lafiya jikin mu da lafiya zaman lafiya muqaftan mu At moments like these, the distance that separates present times from past centuries is suddenly abolished as the pomp and pageantry of the Durba procession conjure up images of Africa's glorious past. <laughs> The courtiers and the soldiers who owe allegiance to the emir ride and march in groups behind him, eager to prove their loyalty to Katsina, seemingly ready, as in centuries past, to prove their mettle in battle. As the procession winds its way through the streets of Katsina, the atmosphere of joyous celebration cements the long-standing bonds between the emir and his subjects, a powerful source of social and cultural stability. Allah'a emanet olun. 
As he rides through the streets, the Amir is surrounded by lines of colorfully clad attendants and traditional bodyguards, accompanied by a variety of musical performers whose drums, trumpets, bagpipes and flutes fill the air with a surprisingly pleasing array of sounds. <laughs> And now, the crowning moment of the Durba. Groups representing the various districts of the old Katsina Kingdom parade past the stand occupied by the Emir and the Governor, providing a colorful reflection of the complex diversity of the various peoples of Katsina. <laughs> A variety of cultural displays, some enhanced by humorous features, thrill the distinguished guests. A dazzling manifestation that powerfully projects the multifaceted pride and diversity of the people of Katsina. The crowd separates in good 